The Melia Maikau is a brand new small resort on the best beach in Phuket. But does that alone mean that it's worth the trip? Find out as we go for a full tour, coming up. I visited the Malayan Mai Kau just five days after its opening in December of 2021. As is expected, anytime a new business opens, there will be a few speed bumps here and there. But on a whole, they did well. That said, I'm not sure if I'd go back. First off though, let's check out the area. If you've been researching Phuket for more than like five minutes, chances are you know one or all of these beaches. Most of the resorts on Phuket are located in and around all of them, and they're all south of the airport. Mai Kau, directly to the north of the airport though, is like an untouched wilderness. Mai Kau Beach is in a protected national park that spans more than 11 kilometers from north to south. The resort is a quick 15 minute ride away from the airport. The property itself is quite a unique shape that honestly made orienting yourself in the resort surprisingly difficult. Everything is kind of on a diagonal. In typical fashion, the entrance is a bit sparse but clean and lush. While they don't use the term per se, Melia certainly strives to be a lifestyle brand that targets younger and mostly European crowds. Founded in 1956 in Palma de Mallorca, Melia International operates over 350 hotels and is Spain's largest hotel brand. All of the structures in the resort are a maximum of just two levels. Partly due to this, and partly due to the diagonal layout, the property has a very geometric and boxy feel to it. On a small scale like this resort, I think it works. A larger resort, I don't think they could get away with the same design. The exterior facade of almost all the buildings is clad with the gray ironwork that you can see here. When I was being guided around the property after arriving, the front desk agent pointed out that the design of the metalwork is inspired by traditional Peranakan designs. Peranakan refers to the Straits Chinese who reside in parts of southern Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. It's said that almost 70% of Phuket's current population has some Peranakan heritage in their family lineage. When researching the hotel for writing today though, they mentioned nothing about Peranakan inspiration whatsoever. Rather, they refer to the design as a blend of contemporary Thai and Mediterranean aesthetics. Don't know the reason behind the disconnect, but either way, the morning golden light is when the open air reception area really looks at its best. A small lobby bar is on site serving juices and teas, including the apple tea that I was served on arrival. A nice departure from lemongrass. Across the pond, we're now in front of the spa, which wasn't open yet at the time of filming. Here though, we can get the best shots of the lobby itself. The landscaping throughout is clean and modern. Nothing spectacular, but fitting of what I was expecting. The resort has two pools. The one that we see here is what I'll call in the fat part of the property, surrounded by villas and suites. The other one, which we'll see soon, is in the skinny part of the property and just in front of the beach. You can see what I mean a bit more clearly here. According to Google Maps, the part on the right is just 15 meters wide.
This is where the conference rooms are, known as the Power Lounge. This part I don't really understand. Such a small property and so much of it is allocated to this. They must have some big corporate contracts in mind. The resort has a total of 100 rooms. 30 of them are suites, mostly on the second floor, and the 70 villas are all on ground level. Note though, all suites and villas are attached. Now we're passing by Sasa. Sasa is where you'll find breakfast in the morning and is also generally open for lunch and dinner, serving contemporary Thai cuisine. Just past Sasa, we have my favorite venue, Gaia. With an open kitchen and a very fresh and modern feel to it, it's easy to imagine dinners here al fresco on a warm and humid night. Here we can also see the Peranakan design motifs continuing in the wall decorations. Next down the line, we have the pool bar. It's advertised as being swim up, not sure how that would work. It does look very modern and inviting, but I don't think I'm the only one that would just wish that there were a few actual tables here and there. Maybe I'm just showing my age here. Then we have the beautiful turquoise pool. I much prefer the design of this one compared to the one in the center of the property. But let's remember that there are 100 rooms. Let's assume that means 200 guests. By my count, there's only seating for 30 people at this pool. At the end of the pool is a small artificial beach and then a pristine and natural lawn leading to the beach itself, surrounded by tropical pine trees. There's also a small restaurant to the left. One thing I do love about being in Maikau, even if the resort was at capacity, this line of trees continues all the way up the coast, so you never would know if there were tons of other guests at other resorts behind the trees. And finally, we have my beach of the year for 2021, my cow. The camera truly does not pick up the scale here. The lawn and trees are up top, and then there's about a five meter drop, and then plenty of comfortably coarse sand. Then the beach drops again before you're able to actually meet the water. Those levels give you this unbelievable feeling as if you're on the top of the island looking out over the sea. And no matter how powerful your binoculars are, you're not gonna be able to spot anything up and down for 11 kilometers. Taking a look at my room now, N101. N is the building, 101 being the first room on the first floor. This is one of their private pool villas, which sadly, not my favorite. The outer door brings you into the pool courtyard. Behind the sliding glass doors is the bedroom. 
The rooms are fresh, distinctly beachy, and really poorly laid out. Look at all of this wasted space. All this just to put your beautiful suitcases on display? How about a sofa? The minibar is decently stocked, but the placement is a bit strange, directly beside the bed. Any menus or info that you need was available from the QR code cube on top of the fridge. Plenty of glass bottled water, Nespresso pods, Dilma tea, and some instant sachets as well. Outlets are conveniently placed bedside, but there's a distinct lack of a premium feel in most of the materials used in the room. All of the wood and many of the surfaces has this beachy Ikea feel to it. Nothing wrong with Ikea, but for a pool villa in Phuket, I expect a little bit better. I won't go into detail, but it's also clear which materials will and will not age well, as some of the paint is already beginning to peel on some fixtures. Then we have this single lonely chair over here. After replacing the luggage storage area with a sofa, how about a nice desk or working space here? I do fully realize that not everyone works while traveling, but I'm pretty sure that everyone appreciates a hub of sorts in the room where they can put all of their important stuff to charge and keep it all together. The closet was a standard size, but considering you don't need to actually fit your luggage in there, it's probably plenty big enough for most and came complete with everything you'd expect, plus a steamer as well. Going back out now, there's a small padded seating area in the corner, a single lounge chair, and then the pool itself, which is the big disappointment here. Let me tell you why. It's only 1.2 meters deep. That's under four feet. To me, that's not a pool. That's at best a plunge pool. To enjoy a good book, you'd need to either sit on that tile bench or kneel down in the pool like I did. Also, I'm not sure if this will grow in more, these bushes don't really provide that much privacy, especially at night, especially since the bathtub is also out here. Directly behind the bathtub is the indoor-outdoor shower, which leads to the rest of the restroom. In theory, you could close the glass door in the shower and then open the doors to the bedroom if you'd like the bathroom partly air conditioned. Let's forget about that room for now and focus on the positive. The sunset that we know is coming up really soon.
This was by far the most people that I saw on the beach in any direction at any given time. I understand it's during COVID, but I've stayed in many properties in Thailand during COVID and this was exceptionally quiet. The sunsets here are simply spectacular. For dinner that night, the Caesar salad chronicles continued and this time I was served an oh so petite salad, naked. They insisted that there was dressing on it already. Perhaps I'm blind, but I certainly didn't see or taste any. That was followed up by a white pizza which was better. The next morning, we headed to Sasa for breakfast. One note if you're still with me, if you don't enjoy loud music with your meals, all of your meals, you might not enjoy dining at this resort in general. There was always freakishly loud music playing. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and, and put this one in the growing pains column. But yeah, worth noting. There was a buffet with a supplemental but limited menu of a la carte dishes that you could order. The buffet itself though was bog standard generic. If this was a spread in a big city hotel's club lounge, it would be good. But for what's being called a five star resort, I don't think so. Vanilla mini muffins aren't going to get you that far. And the hot dishes, limited to congee, fish curry, bacon, sausage, and shumai, was a little less than inspired. The Eggs Benedict, at least, though, were pretty good. Our final stop today is at the large but sparsely equipped gym. A bit ironically, at every turn at this resort was Melia Branding reminding you, our passion is conveyed in every corner, in every object, making our guests stay something memorable, where well-being and comfort reach their maximum expression. Welcome to the place where everything has a soul. Welcome to Malia. This is ironic because a, a bit of soul is just what it needs. Okay, now on to the flip-flop score. The room design was the biggest letdown for me. Just a lot of wasted space at a five. The room was mostly in great condition as it should be, but I'm curious what it's going to look like in a year. Service was well-intentioned, but slow. Some of that we can put on just opening, but some of it also came from just not being proactive. The common areas are nicely designed, but the linear fashion of the restaurants and pool does limit how many people can actually enjoy them. Grounds and cleanliness were not a problem though with full marks. Food quality was just okay. The small issues at dinner were growing pains, but that breakfast buffet was just poorly executed. Amenities were good overall, and then we have what I think is the magnificent Mai Cow Beach, with a very special score of 11. Overall, an 84 out of 100. Do I feel the need to go back to this resort very soon? Not really, but I can see how it would be desirable for some young couples. That said, I will definitely be checking out other resorts along Mai Cow in the future. I genuinely hope that you found this tour useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment and subscribe for two new flight or hotel reviews published every week.